Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss some of the important questions that are often asked by surveyor. Though this department is not ours, that is tech department. But what is very common and what is very prevalent is the machinery aspect that we engineers have only to look at. Whether it is placed on deck, whether it is placed on engine room, or whether it is placed in the bridge itself okay so we have to take care of that so in that aspect so a couple of your questions related to the windlass and the winch aspect i hope uh, that is clear for you the difference and all and what is a windlass and winch and what is the difference between a windlass and a winch that i'm not going to discuss here okay so the first uh, aspect of here today is the first uh, question that was asked by the surveyor was what are windlass safety devices okay so if we talk about windlass safety devices then see this one is very common so this will basically asked in electrical aspect so this one is very common whenever we talk of a safety device that is an emergency stop okay and overload trip whenever there is an pull capacity or push capacity lifting equipment that is involved then we must be having this overload trip as well over speed trip mechanical brake and slipping clutch for overload to prevent any undesirable damage such as hull damage due to anchor drop and rope breakout okay so if suddenly there is no slipping clutch break then what will happen if there is a sudden anchor drop so what will because of that load that will damage the hull part aspect so if you are not aware about slipping clutch this is an added advantage because i have not heard that this being asked but i have added to this what is slipping clutch in windlass so it is fitted between prime mover and gearing okay it is incorporated with motor magnetic brake and drive shaft and drive shaft set to slip at approximately 133% of full load torque letting go or dropping speed is controlled by friction brake okay and hauling speed is 0.15 meter per second so these are uh, factual data that you need to uh, recollect about uh, slipping clutch in windlass why slipping clutch is fitted in windlass in windlass undue stresses must not be applied to chain cable and machinery without slipping clutch excessive stress could be applied to cable by armature momentum by sudden obstruction when heaving or when bringing the anchor into hose pipe fitted also to avoid inertia of prime mover being transmitted to windlass machinery in the event of shock loading on cable when anchor is being hosed when ship is riding at anchor boss droppers prevent the strain for windlass so these are basically the different uh, uh, what we say uh, reasons why we have slipping clutch uh, windlass okay so the first aspect of question what was very common was about the safety devices that we have covered now we move on to the next question this was also asked and it's very important windlass gear backlash measurement so it's a spur gear spur gear so we are not going to in the technicalities of spur gear uh, but how do we uh, measure this between tooth of gear and gear wheel and pinion okay so what we do so the area the location where we are measuring that you are you are aware of it now when we talk we have a solder wire which is placed between the tooth of pinion wheel okay and motor which is obviously the motor will be connected to the pinion is turned one complete revolution so what will happen because the solder wire that is placed that will become thicken okay that must be in uh, circular cylindrical in shape if we talk about in 3d measure the thickness by and when it when after turning a full revolution we take it out and then we measure it by vernier caliper so this is a common thing that we are doing because in all shipping industry we do sometimes it's like a jugard thing okay so even if you see the um, bumping clearance of even compressors that we'll talk about in separate video so there also you find that they are putting a lead ball and then we are turning the compressor manually by keeping the uh, cylinder ca cover a top cover okay head cover 
and uh, then what we do after getting a value from the vernier caliper then we compare that with the standard value from the manual okay so we see that how much is the deviation and what not okay now there are two things there are certain tests that we do load test that may not be so much important but yeah i have covered it there are even rpm test speed test all these tests are there but i have covered here brake holding test oh so the rendering aspect somewhere you will find it because i have clubbed here the information from different different websites and even edited so to make it presentable so why we do load test is to perform the condition of mooring winches so the condition of mooring winches what is the actual condition so we do load test this load is simulated using weights attached to a wire rope and lifted vertically so what we do with a wire rope we attach some weight and then it is lifted vertically when we consider the total load so we also need to take the efficiency of the sheave in the count okay sheave efficiency we need to uh, take so this is the formula wherein we have load on the winch is denoted by f and the total weight will be denoted by w the relation with the efficiency will be this okay now the next important aspect uh, about the brake holding test so for normal operation the recommended ocimf this uh, body setting the brake uh, uh, is 60% of maximum braking load of the rope for new ship this is tested for 80% now whenever on whichever ship you are there so this test is generally carried actually uh, it should be carried five yearly it is mandatory but uh, it is desirable and advisable to carry it annually and even on some ships it is done annually because one of the very critical equipment every ship is supplied with a brake testing kit so we have a testing kit now it is done as 80% now keep all these thing points in mind so uh, actually it should be done at 60% of what maximum braking load and now what we have is the aspect is of 80% okay so uh, why this 20% margin is because for the factor of safety okay now every ship for this testing of brake holding test we have what is known as brake testing kit now in this kit we have several equipment so this is the image that i have uh, depicted here this is the actual thing now you can see here how it is being done where it is placed now we'll whatever we will be talking will be talking in respect to this image so you can see a jack hydraulic pump hand pump and this triangular shape that is placed on the rotating drum okay test kit has hand pump hydraulic jack pipe pressure gauge before testing use winch with slight brake applied to make uh, brake dry for any water this is a caution or you can say the precaution that we uh, often do because uh, winch is exposed to the atmosphere where even if there is uh, water coming in the winch so what become it will be uh, wet so to uh, avoid the error factor what we are doing is we are applying the brake and then we are doing it okay so uh, now what how we are doing rig the brake testing kit as shown in the figure so you you saw it here in the figure we place it like this okay now jack shall be placed firmly on the ground and in correct position ensure that pressure gauge on the hydraulic jack showing zero pressure gauge is showing zero tighten the brake of the mooring winch fully now we tighten now we start pressurizing okay uh, create a torque which acts which acts of the lower as shown above this simply means we are trying to make the brake slip or render so now what we are doing when we are applying pressure we are trying to give it a torque we are generating torque we are creating torque and the brake is actually applied so what we are trying to do is we are trying to intentionally slip the brake so that we can know at what torque and at the corresponding force and the pressure and the weight we can calculate that the brake slips and so that we can have a 
this is this value is taken from a calculation so we are not going into uh, that calculation aspect okay a marking is required to be made on the brake screw indicating the limit to which it should be tightened so to that point till the when the brake is tightened and the whole force is applied and the torque is generated so we are marking it this position is held for a minute and then marking is checked again to see if there is any slip okay this is the second depiction of the image okay so now wherever the brake is required that marking we are holding this torque for a minute we see that if the brake is slipping or not okay so this is the whole aspect of it so here in this video we covered a few of the important questions the first one was uh, what are windlass safety devices second one was windlass gear backlash measurement the load test which was not important the third one which we, what we covered was about the brake test so all these points were uh, all these three questions were asked uh, by the surveyor in exam about the safety aspect the what are the safety devices that is fitted there then was a black backlash measurement for the spur gear and the third one was a brake test so i hope it is clear uh, you can go through the video again and uh, we thank you for your valuable time and i request you all to share your kind feedback so that we can improvise on this and even if you want some topics to be covered you can also come also comment for that thank you all the best